Uh, you know, we have comments from other ones saying they want to jail us so freaking bad. What happened? What happened? I don't understand it. What has happened? What has happened that, that there's this bloodthirsty culture out there? And then what happened? I don't know. We can step back. We can work together. So you guys have said you don't want to play games. You just said you want to work together. Cyber Ninja sent you guys a detailed list of questions to answer before, like, before this audit started. You guys said, no, we're not doing that. You guys got invited to a meeting tomorrow to answer their questions. You said, no, we're not doing that. Where's the cooperation? Why don't you just put it to rest by answering them directly all the questions they have and they need to know to do this audit correctly? If, 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 if. The, the, the Tuesday invitation is, is, is so silly. We're not, I'm not showing up to that. What's to stop this from happening in every future election if results don't go the way that no. the majority in the Senate likes? This needs to stop. You say you've drawn a line in the sand. This needs to stop. What is backing up that line in the sand? If the results question any of our activities, then we will answer them in court. We had two people, a recorder, Richard, uh, Steve Gallardo, say what the Senate is doing is illegal, questioning the legality. Why can't you challenge that? It's not that it's illegal. We conducted two audits here uh, at Maricopa County. By the way, at the strong suggestion of Karen Fan and others, at the strong suggestion of many people who did believe that there were improprieties in the election. We had two voting system laboratories conduct those audits and they came out with findings. You're looking for answers that, um, you know, that have already been verified and validated. It's taking place in the courts, it's taking place in the auditing system, and if there was true scrutiny, that's where the focus should be. Were the previous audits done correctly, and if so, what were the results? Were the court findings appropriate? If so, what were the results? And if not, that's why we have a judiciary. That's why we have a judiciary. So as a person who spends his life seeking truth and speaking truth and evaluating evidence and understanding the rule of law, the process that's taking place right now for this audit does not fit any of that criteria. It is about come up with a hunch, try to find a way to put enough false information out there to make it valid, and then accuse others of being dishonest. As I stated before, that's the problem right now in our society. We, we were cooperative to the extent we took the, we took the ballots there, we took the machines, we didn't fight them. We didn't fight them. But we are not participating in this audit. We're not part of this audit. We did our two. We didn't believe that there needed to be another one. That's why we went to court and the court ruled that they were entitled to the ballots in the election machines, and that's exactly what we did. That's exactly what we did. We sent them where they wanted them, over at the Coliseum. We turned over things that were requested of us in a subpoena, but we are not participating in the audit in any way. You want this to end, that you want this discussion, this issue to move forward. My question to you all is how does that happen? when there are so many of these accusations being made, you gentlemen and, and the, you know, the county responds in different ways. People though still believe those accusations. You respond, you are still accused of lying. So how does this ever get resolved? Some of these people are only gonna be happy when they get the answers they want. And they're not going to get that from the experts. What about this novel theory? You stop indulging these lies and you instead tell them they are unfounded, they are without substance, and that they are the, the, the product of people who are lying to you. And I'm sorry that they're lying to you, but that is what's happening here. That's an opportunity, that's a solution. If every single person in the state legislature said that, we'd be done pretty quickly. That's a solution. If every single person in the state legislature said that, we'd be done pretty quickly. That's a solution, that's a solution, that's a solution, that's a solution. And I think most of you know that all the election experts across the country, and I think most of you know, have talked about Maricopa County being the model for how you react to a pandemic. And I think most of you know. And still run an efficient, honest election. 
Uh, I think most of you know. Obviously, like to echo everything that Chairman Sellers just said, is obviously, I want to be clear that I uh, believe that Joe Biden won the election. It's obviously, all right? And the reason that I feel confident in saying that we overturned every stone. We overturned every stone. Every stone. And we have professionals. We have professionals. We have professionals. They did everything right. We asked the difficult questions, all right? And we certified the election. We certified the election. Back in November. But now it's time to say enough is enough. It is time to push back on the big lie. We must do this. We must do this as a member of the Republican Party. We must do this as a member of the Board of Supervisors. We need to do this as a country. Otherwise, we are not going to be able to move forward and have an election in 2022 that we can all believe the results, whatever they may be. Again, this wasn't a fight that I chose or any of the people up here. And by the way, I thank and respect every single one of them for being up here because they don't have to be here, but they're here because we work together. But again, we must say once and for all that it is time to move on. And again, like I said, didn't choose this fight, but the fight was brought to us by the Arizona State Senate. When they raised these questions about our good elections folks, literally alleging criminal actions, they did everything right. We asked the difficult questions. We, 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 we asked the difficult questions. That's when we all decided as a team that enough was enough. Thank you. I'm so grateful that Steve Watson, that John Allen, that Eddie Cook, that Alistair Adele, despite not having any dog in this fight, have stepped up and have been part of the county, been part of Team County, who has said this is enough. I much prefer sending memes to actually sending quotes or opinions. We will do everything we can to comply with the law, but the defamatory lies that have been leaked out irresponsibly by an anonymous Twitter account without being controlled by the Senate, needs to stop. If the attacks on, on our people continue, then we will do what we have to do legally to stop it. But right now, we just want it to be over. I think some of you had made some references to wanting to see other elected officials, other elected Republicans stand up to the big lie, as some of you have called it and a lot of other folks called it. Why do you think we're not seeing that more of that? Why do you think so few elected officials, elected Republicans really outside of this room in this state are actually willing to do that. I guess I don't really know the answer to that. It, 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 I don't understand it. Uh, we need to be increasing the size of our tent rather than selecting just a few people that, that agree or, or, or that we disagree with. Uh, this issue, this is near and dear to my heart. I don't know, you'd have to ask all of them. But for me, you know, I don't, I don't define myself by being a member of the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors. You are being pretty much accused in real time by the chairman of the Republican Party of uh, not giving any evidence during the, uh, the meeting you just had. So just wanna talk about evidence here. So the two largest things that they, they pretty much accused you of is the, uh, the, the, the deleted databases, of course. And then, of course, the, the ballot batch is not matching the ballots. 200 bat, supposed to be 200 ballots for a batch, and there's less than that. So can you please articulate a little bit as to what went on with those two pieces of claims that Fan's letter makes? Reluctantly, again. So the, the, so the, the, the ballot boxes, uh, they don't know how to read transmission slips. We've instructed them how to read transmission slips, but when those 200 ballots come through, sometimes they're pulled out because they can't be read through the tabulators and that creates a duplicate ballot that we then put in there. So that accounts for a lot of them. We spelled this out in the letter. Regarding the deleted databases, you know, we, we walk that out in the letter as well, but it's just fundamentally not true. Um, all the databases are there. There has never been a deleted database. There have been, dele there have been transferred files that were not necessary Necessary to the audit. There have been transferred files that show the course of the, 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 the file being uh, duplicated 
over time over time, but 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 the all of the election files that contain any election results are all still intact, and the cyber ninjas have every single one of them. Uh, your colleague, Supervisor Gallardo, made a statement during the meeting about wanting to see other senators you know, call for an end to this to uh, start speaking out. Uh, do you, to, especially for uh, Supervisor Sellers and Gates, do you echo that sentiment? And what would you like to see out of the other members of the Arizona Senate, especially the Republican members? I have a hard time believing that they truly are happy with what's going on right now. Uh, and hopefully uh, more of them will come forward and, and say that it's time for this to stop. I would say to Karen Fan, I, wait, I thought you were in charge of this. We need to be in charge of this process. They're not in charge of the process, which is simply frightening to me in a democracy that that is what's going on. And by the way, I hate to say it, I know this is not gonna be popular, but we haven't heard a lot out of the business community raising concerns about this. But we haven't heard a lot out of the business community raising concerns about this. This is creating a black eye to Arizona. And I would think and I would think that those business leaders would want this to stop. And I would think and I would think that they would contact those elected officials who they donate money to and say, hey guys, get this in order or make it stop. But we haven't heard much from them. You can go on my Twitter and you can like the stuff that I'm posting, right? I mean, that's what you can do. I, there, there's a way we can speak out. I am uh, very grateful for Paul Boyer uh, for not voting to, again, hold us in contempt and likely lead to, to our jailing. And he asked that we get to court as soon as possible. And that's what we did. That we get to court as soon as possible. And that's what we did. And what I've said and many others have said time and time again here is this needs to get over. This needs to get over. I'm trying to move this forward as quickly as we possibly can. To law enforcement, he said that this would put the life of his uh, deputies at risk. How? Providing the routers, sorry. My limited understanding of this technological component is that it basically gives outside actors a, a house blueprint to how to break down the sheriff's office. They're, they're talking about a huge difference between the routers you and I buy at Walmart Logic has been in short supply throughout this whole process, but I want to make two points of logic. One, how facially asinine, how facially asinine. is it that I would be involved in a cover-up of an election I didn't run, but that I competed in? Don't worry, there's a new sheriff in town. So it's just facially asinine. It's facially asinine. Thanks. All right, well, thank you so much, Sheriff. And I, I guess just one, one thing I'd, I'd like to add that's sort of in conjunction with something that the Vice Chairman said earlier. But, you know, we, we, we conducted an elections in 2020 during a pandemic, something that nobody knew how to deal with, an experience that was really very upsetting to the whole system because all of a sudden we couldn't have the number of precincts open because places were not available to us, the workers weren't available to us. But every step of the way, we were in contact with the legislature, with the Secretary of State, with the Attorney General, and with the Governor's Office saying, we need to make this change. Can we do this within the law? Every step of the way, we ensured that we were within the law and staying within the Arizona and the U.S. Constitution. You know, I'm not, a, I'm not an attorney, but that was so important to all of us, and we did that. Hi, Bill. So we have Paul Weish on the line from... Paul White? Okay. AZ Law. AZ Law? Yes. He's unmuted. Okay, Paul, go ahead with your question. Okay, but Chairman Sellers and uh, Reporter Richard, uh, you, uh, Chairman Sellers, you indicated that... Uh, you didn't want to be you didn't want to be uh, participating in the audit. Uh, one of the things that was turned over in the subpoena uh, were the voter registration uh, databases, all the voter information, with the understanding that the auditors were going to be going door to door and uh, talking with voters and trying to verify. Uh, how come that has not been a legal line in the sand 
for the uh, board? And uh, would it be if, uh, if they again try to do that? Nowhere in their subpoena did it acknowledge the scope of work. This was revealed to us later. Um, that process is not moving forward at this time as we understand. But they have not, that's, that's correct, uh, uh, Stephen, but uh, they have not given a definitive uh, uh, indication that they would not try to do that or that it's not going on uh, even without their knowledge. They haven't been in control of, uh, of all the aspects of the audit. How come uh, that has not been something that you guys have addressed? Supervisor Gates. Yeah. I, no, I appreciate the question. I think you raise a great policy issue, but this is the challenge for us. We are under, we, we had a court order that said those subpoenas are valid. So we don't get to pick and choose what we turn over. That's what we had to do. We followed the law. We believe in the rule of law. That obviously, uh, this practice of going out and knocking on people's doors has raised a lot of concerns and others have raised you know, arguments as to why that shouldn't go on. But again, we are here simply turning over documents in response to what the court has ordered and now we're getting these questions essentially saying that we failed to turn over things or alleging criminal uh, acts and so that's why we're speaking up on these issues today.